giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rechah HaKodash, double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the house of David, which is the elect. Hey, uh, the war drums are still beating, man. All right, uh, Trump issues stern warning to Iran after rocket attack on U.S. Embassy in uh, Baghdad. So let's uh, listen to this. President Trump sending a warning to Iran after a series of rocket attacks targeted the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. <laughs> President Trump tweeting, Iran was responsible. Lucas Tomlinson is live at the Pentagon this morning. Lucas. Julie, the top U.S. commander in the Middle East called that rocket attack on the embassy the largest in a decade. Late last night, President Trump issuing the following threat. Our embassy in Baghdad got hit Sunday by several rockets. Three rockets failed to launch. Guess where they came from? Iran. Now we hear chatter of additional attacks against Americans in Iraq. Some friendly health advice to Iran. If one American is killed, I will hold Iran responsible. Think it over. The U.S. Navy also giving Iran something to think over. Monday, the guided missile submarine USS Georgia transited the Strait of Hormuz off the coast of Iran and slipped into the Persian Gulf. The submarine carries over 150 Tomahawk cruise missiles and has a dry deck shelter to deploy Navy SEALs for potential sabotage operations to cripple any Iranian port. Escorting the sub through the volatile strait, a pair of guided missile cruisers, USS Port Royal and Philippine Sea. Those two warships alone are also armed with dozens of Tomahawk cruise missiles as well. In addition, the American destroyer John Paul Jones tested her five-inch gun in recent days to send another not-so-subtle message. The guided missile destroyer is also armed with dozens of Tomahawks. In total, dozens and hundreds of these cruise missiles are now in range of Iran, ready to launch in minutes and destroy any Iranian targets if ordered. USS Nimitz is also in the area and can launch dozens of F-18 Super Hornets like this. Air Force jet fighter squadrons are also in the area. B-2 and B-52 bombers can deploy from the U.S. on short notice if needed. Israel is also making plans to deploy a submarine to the area. And today on Christmas Eve, over 60,000 U.S. troops are stationed still in the Middle East. Julie? Lucas Tomlinson, thank you. So there you go, man. Let's get the, you know, just real quick scripture. You know, this is just a quick, um, a quick, uh, you know, news and prophecy update. All right. Uh, seeing what's going on in the world. All right. Um, the Lord is still having uh, his, um, his judgments, you know, going out. Okay. Uh, everything is moving according to the, to the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. Um, it's, uh, Psalms 119. And 126 says, It is time for thee, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, to work, for they have made void thy law. All right. And this whole place, all right, this whole world is void of the laws of Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. And the Lord said that because of these things, he was going to gather these nations up, all right, in the, um, <clears throat> in the uh, valley of Jehoshaphat or Yahweh Shapat. Which is the Lord's judgment. All right, that's what that means. So when we when we see America, Babylon the Great, and Iran, you know, and in, in the news, understand that that is prophecy, uh, you know, consistently being fulfilled. Okay, which is going to uh, uh, um, accumulate ultimately into that uh, third uh, world's war, which is going to lead to the complete and utter destruction of Babylon the Great during that time. Yahweh. Yahweh is going to send back Yahweh Shai to deliver his elect through the uh, chariots of Israel. All right. This is um, Joel chapter three, verse nine. Proclaim ye among, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war. All right. So we are in a time of war. Ecclesiastes says that what? That every, that for everything, uh, there's a time and a purpose for everything underneath the, underneath the sun. All right, a time to love, a time to hate, a time for peace, a time for war. Okay, we are in a time of war right now. So this is why we are proclaiming as being the mouthpiece of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the prophets. We are proclaiming this to the world. All right. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. All right. And that's what, you know, all these um, governments, they're spending their most, uh, you know, uh, money 
on military uh, weaponry, upgrading their 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 uh, mili- their military, whether it be their nu- their nuclear arsenal, all right, their fighter jets, all right, their their defense systems, all right, uh, uh, you know, their soldiers, their ability to uh, mix their te- technological advances with you know their um, with their their armies or their soldiers. Everything is being uh, put in the most effort is being put into uh, to war, okay? So it says, and you have these weak countries that were once considered weak, all right, because you have Babylon considered, considered considers itself a uh, superpower, but because of the uh, will of the Most High, you now have these weak countries like North Korea, uh, Iran, all right, uh, particularly uh, Russia at, at a one point in time after, you know, World War II, okay, uh, the USSR was... Uh, you know, uh, dismantled, but now Russia is coming back in that spirit, and it and it is also a uh, a uh, military superpower as well. So these countries are saying that they are strong, strong enough to fight against Babylon the Great. Verse eleven: Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about to their cause, thy mighty ones, to come down, O Yahweh. Let the heathen be awakened and come to the valley of Jehoshaphat, Yahweh Shapat, which means judgment, Yahweh's judgment. For there will I sit to judge. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen around about. Put put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Yeah, all right. The harvest is ripe. The the time of the Lord's uh, judgment upon this earth. All right. As we are seeing all these prophecies, you know, being fulfilled. We're we're you know coming into the time of uh, Jacob's trouble. All right. The hour of temptation with the mark of the beast. All right. We're seeing everything. You know, they're using this whole uh, vaccination. Okay, and and and, and uh, restrictions, you know, um, using this vaccination as a ploy to implement, you know, digital, uh, digital uh, um, immunity. All right, or digital passports, which they're going to use. You know, they can, you know, uh, use that, use a chip to to uh, implement that. <clears throat> so the harvest is ripe for the time of of this third world's war because everything is according to the prophecies of the Lord. It says, come get you down for the press is full. The fats overflow for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of Yahweh is near in the valley of decision. So, so, you know, this is why we have to continue to keep watching these things, man, because we are, we're, we're coming quickly into the day of, you know, that great and terrible day, the day of, uh, scriptures calls it what armor, uh, Armageddon. All right, let's see that. I believe that's Revelation, the 16th chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Um, well, here we go. This is um, Revelation chapter 16, verse uh, 15. It says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he. Actually, let me get this because that's red letter. So let's put that on there. It's our Lord, Yahweh Shai speaking. It says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. Least he walk naked and they sh- and they see his shame. And that's t- talking to who? Who's the blessed? The, the elect, all right? The ones who are watching, all right? And, and you have the, the watchmen of, of the Lord. That, that are now holding their peace there day nor night, the prophets that are given that's given a warning. All right. And keeping the garments is what? Keeping our keeping our faith. All right. Keeping our wisdom, knowledge, understanding. All right. It says at least he walked naked, meaning what? You're you're not you're not uh covered with the understanding. Right? You're not covered with the faith. You're not covered with the wisdom that's going that that pertaineth unto and bringeth salvation. And they shall see his uh, shame. Verse 16. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue uh, Armageddon, or Hamagadwan, okay, which is, uh, I believe that's mountain of troops, and that's and that's over there in, in the uh, in the Middle East, man, all right, so-called Middle East, and that's why you're seeing all this tension, all these, uh, all that tension rising between America, Iran, Russia, because uh, according to Ezekiel 38th chapter, you know, those are going to be th- uh, three major players, but you, you do also have the EU, which is the beast, all right, NATO, uh, you know, China, okay, uh, being also involved. All right, it talks about uh, Ethiopia and and uh, believe it said um, Syria or Libya with them. 
So, yeah, man, we, we know that this third world war is uh, soon, soon to come, man. So, you know, I ain't there, Lord willing. You know, this is edifying it to the elect. You know, stay, stay watching. As the Shai said, stay watching and keep your garments because that's the only way that we are going to, you know, have salvation from this hell that is uh, ensuing, you know, on this world, man. So, uh, you know, till next time, call Lord Yahweh Bashim El Shai, Bashim Rochach with Dash. Shalom.